This video is on the objective compute the value of the test statistic which in this particular case will be a Z score or a Z value for a hypothesis test for one population mean with a known standard deviation. All right, so that means you know sigma is known, the population standard deviation is known, and we're trying to do a test about the population mean. Okay, so this is number one, the first video on this uh, type of uh, a question related to this objective from your Newton Alta homework. And uh, this is again just kind of, we're going one step at a time here through all the steps of, of a hypothesis test. And this is the step where we have to calculate a test statistic right, from our sample. So let's take a look at the question. And again, if you're unfamiliar with the topic, want to see more about it, please click on more instruction. Look at their videos, their notes, their examples, and hopefully they help you out. All right, so here, Olivia, a golfer, claims that her drive distance is more than 174 meters on average. Several of her friends do not believe her. So she decides to do a hypothesis test at a 10% significance level to persuade them. She hits 15 drives. The mean distance of this sample of 15 drives is 188 meters. Olivia knows from experience that the standard deviation of her drive distance is 14 meters. So this is that population standard deviation, right? Where this is one of the few scenarios where you're going to have a known value for sigma, right? a known population standard deviation. Now they give us all this. Right? Remember, now I'm just going to go through the steps of a hypothesis test. Now, we're not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to go up to the point where we have to calculate a test statistic. Eventually, you know, in other videos, eventually we'll go through all the steps of a complete hypothesis test. Right. So I'm going to pull up a piece of paper here. Hopefully you can see it. So remember the first step in a hypothesis test. I'm sorry, my marker is faint. Yeah, that's better. Remember, the first step of a hypothesis test is identify the claim and set up the hypotheses, the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Now, that's already been done for us, but I'm going to do it again here anyway. Um, the claim right, is, uh, you know, this Olivia claims that her drive distance, right, the, the word claim is right there. So we can identify the claim right now. That her drive distance is more <clears throat> than 174 meters on average. Now it's an average. So we're going to let mu, right, mu for a population mean, I'm going to let mu be, you know, the average, her average drive distance. You know, the average distance of all, right, all of Olivia's drives, the entire population. And the claim, right, she claims that the average distance of all her drives is greater than 174 meters. Right. So a little is greater than, and I'll put a little m for meters, but that's the claim. All right, and then we set up the hypotheses, and you know you got the null hypothesis, which is that h sub zero, and then you have the you know, alternative hypothesis, which was that h sub a right, or HA. Now these are formed based on the claim. Now notice the claim here does not involve equality. Right? Her claim is just simply that the drive distance is averages 
the average is greater more than 174. Since it does not involve equality, it's going to be represented by the alternative hypothesis, HA. All right. And then recall that once one of these is set up, you know, these should be opposing statements. You know, what's the opposite of greater than 174? It's less than or equal to 174. So again, this is a perfectly valid null hypothesis here. But then when we actually perform the test, right, when we go and perform the test, what we're going to be doing is assuming the equality. So we're going to, from this, we're just going to assume that the mean, her mean distance, we're going to assume the mean distance, the average distance for all of her drives is equal to 174 meters. Right, and this is typically what, you know, in this particular book, they'll just write the equal part. All right. So you're seeing in the assignment, see how mu equals 174 instead of is less than or equal to? Again, they're, they're just going to be writing what they're going to assume is true. All right. And then the alternative hypothesis is you know, mu is greater than 174, as I said. So that was that was step one. Oh, and one more thing. Um, remember, you can determine what kind of a test you're running, a left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed, based on how the alternative hypothesis looks. So this is a parameter. The value of the parameter, this average distance of all of her drives, is greater than a value. So that means we're running a right-tailed test. All right, so this is something I would want to identify before moving on to the second step. So first step done, I, uh, I, I identified what was being claimed about the population mean. I set up the null and alternative hypotheses. The second step was identifying a significance level. All right. What's the level of significance for this test? and that was that alpha. Now, if if it's not mentioned, if, if it is not mentioned, we're just going to assume a significance level of 5%. But in this particular problem, you know, significance level is mentioned right here. Right? It's 10% significance level. So alpha equals, you know, 10% or 0 0.10, right? Or just 0.1. All right, that's, uh, that's it for that step, right? Just identifying the significance level, the alpha, for the test. Okay. Now a pretty big part, a big step. Finding the test statistic of your sample. Right, so, so remember, a sample's taken. So in this particular problem, a sample is taken. Now this sample was her 15 drives. All right, she hit 15 drives. So N you know, equals 15, right, the 15 drives she took. And then you got X bar Right, the, the remember the sample mean said the mean distance of that sample is 188 meters. Right. Now, if you recall from the central limit theorem for means, right, CLT, central limit theorem, remember the distribution of sample means. Since sigma is known, right? Remember, they gave us sigma as well. Um, the you know, the, it says that you know, she knows from experience that the standard deviation for her all, you know, her drive distances is 14 meters. And since since sigma is known, and we saw this back in the central limit theorem 
and also in confident when we were creating confidence intervals in chapter 8 since the sigma is known right the population standard deviation is a known value by the central limit theorem the remember the distribution of sample means will be approximately normal with a mean you know mu sub x mu sub x bar and a standard deviation sigma sub x bar where mu sub x bar was equal to the mean of the population right mu which from the null hypothesis right from the null hypothesis right, I said it here we're assuming we are assuming from the null hypothesis that the mean of the population is 174. We're assuming we know this. So again, I put, you know, so 174 here. Again, this is from the null hypothesis, right? And the standard deviation of the sample means, right, for samples of size 15, Remember, sample, the standard deviation of the x bars was the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. So in this case, again, we know sigma is 14 divided by the square root of 15. Our, our I don't know how many swings she took. Now I'll pull up a calculator. Let me, let me make this a bit bigger. All right, so there we go. So let me pull up a calculator and I'll approximate this standard deviation. So we got 14 you know, divided by the square root of 15. All right, so this is approximately 3.614, or th approximately 3.615. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a picture. I'm going to draw a picture. All right, so we have our number line here representing different possible values of x bar, right? Different possible sample means for samples of size 15. We're applying the central limit here, saying that the distribution of x bars should be approximately normal. So I draw this little bell-shaped curve, right? Symmetrical bell-shaped curve, and underneath the peak. is the, the mean of the X bars. Well, we said the mean of the X bars is the mean of the original population, which from the null hypothesis, we are assuming is 174. And then these inflection points, right, should be, remember, one standard deviation above and below. These points where the curve goes from curving down to curving up or curving up to curving down. So this is approximately 177.6 here, because again, the standard deviation for the, these X bars is about 3.6. And this is about 130.4 over here. Or sorry, 170.4, not 130. Right. And, so, and remember, uh, and then you could use the, the empirical rule, you know, to say that about 68% of the data is underneath the curve between these two values and then about 95% within two standard deviations, about 99.7% within three, because again, it's a normal curve. But I'm not doing any of that. What we're gonna do is find the test statistic for our sample. Because look, so here's the distribution of all X bars. You know, it, if we assume, right, if we assume the null hypothesis is correct, the mean is 174. Here's the distribution of all X bars for sample of size 15, assuming the null hypothesis is correct. And then we take a look at, okay, where does our sample mean fall? Now, 188, that falls somewhere over here. Right, so here's, I'm gonna make a little star here. Here's 188. This is, you know, our sample mean on this number line of all possible sample means for samples of size 15. The test statistic is simply how many standard deviations away from the mean is it? The test statistic is a z-score. So 
So the test statistic is the z-score of our sample mean. And again, it's a z-score here because we're talking a normal distribution. You know, if it was a student's t distribution, you know, if sigma was unknown, we'd be dealing with student's t and then it would be a t-score. But right now it's a z-score. Right, so what I'm going to do is uh, normalize this random variable. Remember what that means, just write everything's z-scores. So remember the z-score for any particular mean would be that mean minus the, you know, the mean of the means divided by the standard deviation, which is that sigma over the square root of n. It's, you take the value, you know, so it's going to be 188 minus 174 divided by that 14 divided by the square root of 15. All right, the, I take my sample mean, I subtract the mean of the means, uh, what we're assuming from the null hypothesis, 174, and then dividing that value by the standard deviation of the means, which was this 14 divided by the square root of 15. And we get in this picture. Now, you know, then we'd be looking at the standard normal curve. We'd be looking at z scores, you know, bell shape, and all that. Where, you know, remember the standard normal curve underneath the peak is a value of zero, right? 174 would have a, a z score of zero. And then we'd be looking for, you know, what's our z? I'll call it z test. Right? So I'll call this z test, you know, the test statistic. All right, so let me punch this in. I got my calculator up still. So let's take, uh, you know, one in parentheses here, you know, my sample mean, 188, minus the population mean, 174, divided by, and then I'll just put in the previous answer. Right. And again, make sure the numerator's in parentheses there. And then I'm dividing by, you know, that previous answer is the standard deviation. And here's the z-score. And so approximately, and they want us to round to two decimal places, approximately 3.87. So that's about 3.87. So that means, right, that means our sample mean of 188, if we assume the, the mean of the, of, the, of the means is actually 174, our sample mean comes in at 3.87 standard deviations above the mean. And that is very far away. So later on, we would probably say, hey, that assumption that the mean is 174 must be, you know, is probably incorrect. Because if, if the population mean were, were 174, then you would think our samples would come in, you know, probably within two standard deviations of it. You know, if the, if the population mean really were 174, like we're assuming, then you would think all the samples we take, any sample we took would be, would be closer to 174 than this. Right, this is three, almost four standard deviations above the mean. That's very far away. Remember, anything more than two standard deviations away from the mean is pretty far. But again, we'll get into that later, talking about whether or not we reject the null, finding critical values, p-values, all that stuff. But for right now, we're only calculating this test statistic. What's the z-score of our sample mean in this distribution of the means? Back here, this was approximately, like I said, 3.87. All right, get rid of the calculator, and we'll submit this. Wonderful. And again, they you know, look through it and see it's the same calculations. See this, you know, it's your sample mean minus, see, mu sub zero, remember, the null hypothesis was h zero, mu zero is just the mean that you're assuming from the null hypothesis. And then that divided by the standard deviation of the means, the standard deviation of x bar. Same exact calculation I showed you. All right, and please read through the answer explanations, you know, when you get it right, just to make sure that your reasoning was correct, and even when you get, especially when you get it wrong, to you know, see, make sure you can figure out what went wrong 
so that way when you go through and do a, a problem like that again you'll probably do better hopefully All right. so hopefully this helps and thank you very much for watching